everyone. I am going to start on a new project and that's why I'm really, really excited because I get to play with new modules. Now, one of the first things we do about a new project is, especially with new modules, is to create new schematic symbols. And that is why for this video, we will be creating two schematic symbols and then go through some good principles or good tips and techniques for creating these schematic symbols. The first uh, schematic symbol that we are going to create for is this uh, tiny little 1.5 inch e-ink paper module. Now I got this off a of Waveshare, the website, and uh, I got the module version so that it comes with a tiny PCB. Upon closer look, this is how it looks like. And of course the ribbon cables are attached to it via a connector. This is how it looks like at the back of it. As you can see, this is the connector and the ribbon cables are uh, something that I have attached to. And uh, in the schematic symbol, we will be basically breaking out these pins and laying them out. For the second module, I'm actually quite excited about this because this is a GPS module. It is really, really tiny and it comes with an antenna on board. I got this GPS module from CD Top Technologies. It is PA1010D, the name. And uh, this also comes with its own data sheet, which we will be referring to uh, while we do the schematic symbol. And I got it uh, in a cut and a reel format. And uh, if I zoom into it, you can see that it has 10 pins, which we will be laying out in our schematic symbol. Now for the purpose of creating this schematic symbol, as I said, I'll be going through some good principles, tips and techniques, and these are completely agnostic once again to the tool that we are going to use for uh, my purpose, because I use KiCad or KiCad, we'll be using that software to create the schematic symbols. Inside the documentation online for KiCad, there is a section called Symbol Guidelines. And this is where I referred many of the uh, tips and techniques that I will be showing. So why don't we dive straight into KiCad? So let me open it up and I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to create a new folder called Keychain inside my desktop. And inside that, I'm simply going to name the project as Keychain.pro. So to create the schematic symbol, we need to actually access the symbol library. So for this, we will go to Preferences, Manage Symbol Libraries. And we will go and copy this uh, path variable, which is basically the current project folder. And I will switch to the project specific library. Let me add a new line and let's work on the first one, which is called GPS. I'm going to put that as the nickname. And for the library path, I'm simply going to do a slash library, a folder inside it. And let's call it gps.lib. Now, when I go to this uh, tiny little symbol, which is called the symbol editor program inside KiCad, let me open it up. You see, it will rightfully say that this library is not found, but that is absolutely fine because it is a new library that we just created. So I'm just going to click OK. And you see the entire library symbol editor has opened up. And now when I go and search GPS, you will see one GPS here, but it is completely empty. And that is exactly what we are looking for. And inside here, let's create a new symbol and let's call it PA1010D, which is the name of the module. Now here you will see something called the reference designator as a second text box. For this, I always like to refer to the Wikipedia for the reference uh, designators and uh, under U, which it is uh, what it's suggesting, it is integrated circuit. I think I'll leave it as integrated circuit because the GPS module is an integrated circuit. And for the rest of it, I think I'm going to leave it as a default. And all you will see now are two things. One is the value and another one is the reference, uh, the designator field name. So I'm just going to move the two of them. So here's the first uh, tip. Refer to the data sheet pinout configuration or the pinout assignment for that module schematic you're creating. So for the PA1010D data sheet, I found the section on the pin configuration 
But pin assignment, this table is exactly what I'm looking for. So let me split the screen so that I'm able to quickly refer to the pin assignments. Now that we are ready with the data sheet pin assignments, the second tip is to order the pins by the port number. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, lay out these 10 pins. So let's go for the first one, it is ground. So I'm gonna click this button and the pin name is simply gonna be G and D. I'm just gonna follow the second column name and the pin number is one. Now in terms of electrical type, it will be a power input and that's it. So let's go ahead and do the second pin it is a wake up pin with uh, pin number two. Now I do not know whether it's an input or output. So I'm just gonna put it as bi-directional. Similarly for the third pin, which is one PPS, it is saying that it is actually an output. So I'm gonna label it as output. And next go to the fourth pin, which is TX. And TX is obviously an output. Next is the RX and RX is input. The next pin is N reset and it is active low. And in this case, we'll put a tilde sign so that we see the bar on top of it. It is pin number six. And as it says, it is an input. Next is a ground and it is power input. And I'm gonna, gonna do the same thing for pin number eight as well. The next pin is pin nine V backup. It seems to be a power input as well. And finally, VCC, which is pin 10, it is also a power input. Now it looks good. It is 10 pin on the data sheets and that's what we have defined in our uh, KiCad. The next step after we have laid it out according to the port number is to group them by functions. Now this will obviously make it go a little bit out of the port number, but functional arrangement of the pin is very, very crucial for understanding later on our schematic as well as symbols. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put all the positive power pins together. So maybe V backup and VCC and then the second thing I'm gonna do are all the grounds. So I'm gonna put all the grounds together. The next thing I'm gonna do is put all the inputs on the left-hand side and all the outputs on another side. Now, as you can see that the TX and RX should definitely uh, come together. So let me put them together. So there you see, I've kind of grouped them up together according to some functional arrangement. So the fourth tip now is to put all the positive power pins at the top and rotate it as well. So that's what we are gonna do for the VBAC and VCC. Let me rotate them. Similarly, for the next tip, we are gonna put all the negative power and the grounds together, but at the bottom. So I'm also gonna rotate them. Something like this, maybe just put it in the middle. For the inputs, uh, we are gonna put them all on the left-hand side, maybe something like this. And for the output, we're gonna put it on the right-hand side. For the input and the output, the left and the right, it's mainly because of the signal flow uh, so that it's visually easier and it's cognitively easier for us to understand when we lay out the entire schematic. Sometimes as you see that because we want a functional grouping, it might not be possible to put the inputs all on the left and then the outputs all on the right. But as much as possible, we try to uh, group them according to functions and inputs on the left and outputs on the right. So it seems like I just need to rotate these and I'm gonna put them together. So that looks really, really messy. So let me do some cleanup. Maybe the power pins like so, and a little bit of arrangement. And for the next uh, step, we are gonna select the rectangle and we're gonna create a box so that it can encompass all the pins that we have drawn, something like this. And immediately I will go ahead and edit rectangle options and fill it with a body color. Now that looks a lot neater now. So let me just maybe position it at the center and put the two value and the reference designator right at the top. So there you see, that is uh, the tiny little GPS module we have made. 
And now when you go to the search tree and search for GPS, you will see that uh, the new module we have made it uh, is right here. Next, let's go ahead and create the second symbol for the GPS module and you see how similar the steps are. And before we dive in, I really want to check out the folder structure I said. And uh, we have a directory called library here. And if we inspect the library, we will see that the gps.lib and gps.dcm, the the symbol library folders uh, or the files are right here. So I'm going to go inside the KiCad again and go to manage symbol libraries. And I'm basically going to copy this, add another one, maybe call it e-ink. And for the library name, I can just call it uh, e-ink once again. And now when we open up the symbol editor, it will once again say e-ink library not found, but that's fine. And now when we search for e-ink, you will find an empty uh, folder. So let's create a new symbol here and I'm going to name it wave share 1.54 inch. It's a little bit of a long name. I'll leave it as you as a designator once again. And now if I want to query the library folder, you will see that the e-ink library is also here. So as usual, I'm just going to move them. And let's start with the arrangement of the pins by the port number. So I have pin one and then pin two, which is also power input. Now the SPI MOSI master out slave in pin is an input pin. Maybe I should label it as DIN because that's what the module says. And then it's the clock pin, which is also an input. Chip select is active low. So I'm going to put a tilde here. I'm not really sure, so I'm going to put it as bidirectional and I'm going to put the DC as pin six bidirectional. Next is the reset pin seven, which is active low. So make sure I have the tilde. And finally, the busy pin number eight is actually an output this time. All right. So next we will arrange them according to functions. So the power pin, a uh, positive one at the top, the negative one at the bottom. I'm going to put all the SPI pins, uh, which are input mostly at the left hand side and the rest of the pins on the right hand side, something like this. So now let me just rotate them. All right. So input on the left, mostly grouped according to function and output on the right, positive power on the top, negative power at the bottom. Next, we will draw a rectangle. And we will also color it as yellow, fill it with a background color. All right, that looks pretty good. We will just centralize it a little bit. And finally, ensure that the name and the reference number is quite nearby. And now when we look at the second schematic symbol, this is how it looks like. So those are the two schematic symbols we made for uh, new modules that we tend to use for typically for new projects. Now for the library folder that we have, I typically tend to use them as a Git sub module. So I have another video on how to use KiCad and Git sub module for the library folder. And more importantly, when we combine all of these schematic symbols into a schematic, we also have some good principles and foundations. So check out that video and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.